So what do you do when you hurt somebody's feelings without intending to? If you're like me, you feel awful and sometimes you get frozen in fear. So in this video, I'm going to share what I did recently that worked and what I didn't do years ago that I should have done, but I didn't know any better. So first, if you're new here, my name is Michelle Ferris. I'm a psychotherapist and I love helping people create relationships that work. So a few weeks ago, I was at the gym and I was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking about his relationship. And all of a sudden, I thought everything was totally fine. And a few minutes later, he came back and he was really upset. He said I had really hurt his feelings, he felt really judged, and he was, on the scale of 1 to 10, he was probably an 8. He was really hurt. And I was totally surprised. I, had, I did not see this coming. So what I did in the moment was I took a breath and I just let him talk. I could tell there was no way I was going to be able to say much at that point. And I was already trying to figure out, you know, what did I say? because intuitively I knew I had said something, but I wasn't sure what. So when there was a pause in the conversation, I definitely apologized and said I was really sorry. And he wasn't ready to hear it yet. He walked away and I could tell he was just not ready. And this brings up a really important point is sometimes it takes more than one conversation to resolve things because people aren't ready. Their emotions are too hot, they're too hurt, and they just can't listen at that point. And that was okay, and I intuitively knew that based on experience. What I would have done before is I would have frozen, and I would have felt so much shame and embarrassment about making a mistake, I would have felt like I was the mistake. And that would have made me want to not deal with him at all. I would have just kind of shrugged away in shame. And that wouldn't have worked. And I'm super grateful that I was able to stay present enough and really hear him in the moment but it also wasn't done. So the next thing I did was I called him about an hour later and I figured it might be enough time and I called him, he was ready and receptive to talk and I reiterated my apology again because what I did in that hour is I started thinking, how did he get hurt? What did I say? And I didn't really come up with the exact thing I said, but I knew I said something that came off as unsolicited advice and it was judgy. And I knew it at the time, but I, I don't remember exactly what I said. So I just used that and I just used that to apologize and name it like I totally get why you felt judged. Uh, I know I overstepped and gave you some advice and it wasn't okay. And I really want you to know that I know that and I'm really sorry. And what I did was I apologized a few times because I wanted to make sure he heard me. Uh, this isn't something where I was begging or I was being a doormat, but I felt like I really wanted to make sure he heard me and he did. And because I was able to name it specifically, and if you don't know what it specifically is, you can always ask. You can always say, hey, can you help me understand what made you feel that way? Before I did this work, what I would have done is I would have been so afraid of confrontation that I would have sat on it for weeks and weeks because it was way too scary for me to confront something like this because I felt like, oh my gosh, he's going to be mad at me. He's going to yell at me. I had all these things in my head and really none of those things were true which is why I was able to call him back an hour later because I knew that I was okay, it was okay to make a mistake and I was gonna give myself permission to be human and to call him back and to really own it. And the thing is, is you can own it without being a doormat or without feeling bad about yourself and that to me was the growth is that I could own a mistake without feeling bad about myself and sinking back into that shame because that's what you can do when you're doing relationship recovery. So the next thing I did was I really let him in that phone call share more about how he was hurt because he wasn't finished. And usually when people are hurt, they need to tell you maybe a few times in different ways. And part of what worked was I was able to tolerate that and I was able to really listen to him. And that's where saying I'm sorry in different ways came in because I really wanted him to hear that I could validate his pain and understand it and find the grain of truth in what was said instead of going into defending myself. Because I think when we hurt somebody's feelings unintentionally, 
part of what we do is we want to justify our behavior and say, oh, I didn't mean that. Uh, that isn't my intention. I love you. But the problem is, is that even though that may be true, it glosses over the hurt that they have. So their perception of what happened at that moment is actually more important than who's right. So I really want you to consider that the next time you maybe get surprised like I was when somebody comes and says they're hurt by something you did or said. Because the first thing I want you to do is breathe and listen and you don't have to say much. If you can offer an apology, great. If not, and you need a little bit of time, far out. Take the time and call them back, preferably within 24 to 48 hours, because the longer you let it go, the more you're likely to get into fear like I was, or the other person feels like you're just ignoring them and you're not dealing with it. So if you can deal with it quickly, that's the best thing. Now, the next thing is I want you to watch my next video, when to speak up and when to be quiet, because sometimes you have to know in order to have these conversations, what to do and when to do it. Thanks so much.